I can have, um, well, first of all, Maria. Here. Yeah. You, you hear it right. And Gary. Here. Amanda. Here. Rick. I'm right. present. We got a full house tonight. Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Amanda, can you lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kylie, do we have any public comments? Uh, not nope. pertaining to closed session. Okay. Do you have any cards for a public comment? Nope. Okay, tonight, closed session, number one, pupil personnel, expulsion case number two, 23 to 24, expulsion case number three, 23 through 24. Number two, conference on litigation, government code section 54956.9, current litigation, 10 cases, CIVDS 1907172, CIVDS 2011183, CIVDS 2022956, CIVSB 21113303, CIVSB 2203303, CIVSB 2218676, CIVSB 2227023, CIVSB 2304865, CIVSB 2314073. CIVSB 2322171 and government code section 54954.5 and 54956.9. Anticipated litigation, we have one case. Public employee discipline, dismissal, release, reassignment, transfer, title certificated and classified. Number four, public employee appointment, resignation, Retirement reduction title certificated and classified employees. Number five, conference with a labor negotiator, agency negotiator, Dustin Conrad, employee organization, Apple Valley Unified Teacher Association. Number six, agency negotiated, Dustin Conrad, employee organization, CSEA. Number seven, conference with a labor negotiator, Trene Nelson is a negotiator, employee organization, unrepresented. Conference with real property negotiator, Government Code 54956.8, negotiation parties, Matthew Schulenberg and Apple Valley Unified School District. Security matters, Government Code Section 54957, consultation with the Apple Valley Unified School District, Chief of Police. And finally, number 10, superintendent evaluation. Uh, what I need now is a motion to go into closed session. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Call the meeting to order. We'll have our student reports. First, Sycamore Rocks, Madison, and Bradley. Good, Good evening. evening. My name is Maddie. And I'm Bradley. We would like to take a moment to tell you all the amazing things that we have going on at Sycamore Rocks this year. We are excited and honored to tell you Sycamore Rocks is an art-focused school. Some of the art programs we include are school musical, music lessons, band, art club, and our annual art fair. Students at our drama club are working hard practicing for this year's production, Moana, which will be performed in March. Everyone is so excited to see the story come to life on the stage. On Tuesday, our school held our annual Halloween event where students and their families had a safe and fun place to trick or treat and play games. We had such a great turnout at this event and look forward to our upcoming events such as Holiday Fun Night in December and Arts Fair in May. A few weeks ago, Sycamore Rock Student Council hosted a spirit week to increase school spirit and, ex and celebrate <coughs> Halloween. We love seeing everyone get creative with their outfits. Intervention is alive and well at Sycamore Rocks. These include guided reading, OG phonics, intervention groups, LLI, and ELL support groups. We ensure that students are getting the help that they need to be successful in their learning. A few months ago, we had a great science assembly presented by the Gillette. The students really enjoyed it and are looking forward to more STEM-related activities in the future. We have had the opportunity to participate in various after-school clubs this year. To name a few, Art club, esports, math club, engineering, and STEM, STEM club, and basketball club. One last thing, we were like, we would really like to thank all of our teachers and staff at Sycamore Rocks. They truly make our school special. Thank, thank you, you for, for allowing, allowing us to speak, speak about, about how exciting Sycamore Rocks is. Have, Have a great, great night. night. Good job. High Desert Premier Academy, Ismael. All right. <laughs> good evening, President Bender, board members, Superintendent Nelson, and Executive Cabinet. I hope you all had a good fall break. October really flew by. Next thing we know is going to be 2024. <laughs> Thank you, board member Arce, for visiting our campus. We hope you enjoyed seeing all the science experiments that were going on and the brain art that the students have been working on. We love having you visit our campus. Please come and see us anytime. World Kindness Day is November 13th. Take 10 seconds to look at your partner and say something nice. <laughs> you, you look very nice, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. You too, Mr. Bender, you look nice. <laughs> we get to learn through experience and at the Mayor Youth uh, Leadership Summit. We do this every year, seven students of High Desert Premier are going. We get to learn about the local government and we also get the chance to be heard and meet the Mayor of Apple Valley. We had the privilege to host Job Corp when they came to speak to our 12th graders interested. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I just drew a blank, sorry. Oh, I forgot where I was. Oh, uh, <laughs> they came to speak with our 12th graders interested in the program for graduates. The presentation was very straightforward and let us know our opportunities and advantages of going to Job Corp. The seniors were interested, or the seniors that are interested in attending will visit the campus in January. We also got a new OWL staff member, Ms. Bryant. She was very nice and energetic. She's a very sweet woman, and she said she was very happy to be there and be a part of our OWLs. We're looking forward to having Ms. <laughs> or, sorry, Superintendent Nelson and the cabinet visit us on the 8th to speak with our students. I hope we all have some great ideas for our school and I look forward to seeing both of you guys there. I mean, just like last year. <laughs> uh, one last thing I wanted to say, 
I want to give a shout out to our lunch ladies, Miss Nunez and Miss Hood. We don't have a traditional cafeteria, but they always do their best to fulfill our needs. They're very sweet. And I also wanted to talk about my brother. He's a graduate from High Desert Premier. Uh, he's a Marine now, and he's going to come and visit probably next week. And I'm going to have Mr. Smith see him, and hopefully he's happy to see you, Mrs. Smith. And uh, I can't wait to see him and give my big brother a hug, I guess. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for your time and support, uh, and I will see you all on the next meeting. I hope you have a great fall break, or break in Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> Good job. Grand Hills High School, Hannah. Good evening, board members, executive cabinet, and attendees. My name is Hannah Forget, the junior class president at Granite. I spoke to you all the past few months, and I'm very excited to speak to you guys again tonight. Uh, so last month, theater held their first annual fall festival. They had a haunted house in the pack, which was worked by the theater and avid students, a trunk or treat, a costume contest, performances from band, choir, drama, dance, and many more, as well as booths and games from Link Crew, Key Club, Interact Club, ASB, Skills USA, Track, French Club, Wrestling, GSA, Women's Department Club, Yearbook, and a lot more. It was a huge success, and I can't wait to host it for years to come. On Halloween, ASB held the first pep rally of the year, and it was a huge success. We had performances from dance, our Latino band, choir, and a few others. We announced our door decorating contest and costume test winners, and on, and on October 20th, we held our powder puff game for the junior versus senior girls. It was a very fun, exciting game that extended into overtime, where the seniors took the win with the score of 12-6. to 6. Um, I'm a little bit mad about that, but... <laughs> During our pep rally, we recognized our students for having the highest 11th grade CAF scores in math and English and the highest CAF scores for science in the district. 115 students met or exceeded the standards in at least one test, and 23 students met or exceeded the standards in a two. 29 students met or exceeded the standards on all three. And then some of our Linker leaders attended a Linker conference at Eisenhower High School last month. Our leaders learned team building skills, how they can prove their connections with other students, leadership skills, and made friends from all over the area. Last Friday, Link Crew also held an after-school movie night with snacks and foods, so that was cool for the freshmen. Drama went to see the musical Hades Town at the Amundsen Theater in L.A. Drama and choir students teamed up to work as scarers at the Calico Ghost Town Halloween Haunt. This week is our Latino Heritage Week. We have lunchtime performances from our Latino bands and other fun activities, including a spirit week. Last week was National Red Ribbon Week, and our peer helpers were out there every day at lunch with activities and giveaways. They held a drunk and intoxicated driving simulation course to warn students of the gender of drug usage and drinking while driving. As for upcoming events, it's Friday at 7 p.m. is the opening night of Willy Wonka. Um, I'm in the play, and I just came from rehearsal, and it's looking really good, so you guys should definitely come see that. But there's only two weekends, so make sure you come see it. Next week, some of our students will be attending the Mayor's Youth Leadership Summit, and they are also very excited. In the world of Granite Hills High School Athletics, Cougar Excellence has been on full display. Boys and girls cross-country finished the season as Desert Sky League champs and completed in DSL finals today. Our girls' tennis team won their first playoff match Tuesday and continued their playoff run with the match yesterday. And for the first time in our school's history, our football team is the Desert Sky League champions. Yes. And, we <laughs> and we will be hosting Slasian High School in the first round of playoffs this Friday at 7 p.m. at the District Stadium, so come out and support. We thank you all so much for your support of Grand Hills High School and look forward to sharing more next month. As always, Maroon and Gray lead the way. Good job. Apple Valley High, Sophia. Thank you so much. Good evening, members of the board and attendees. My name is Sophia Brandt, and I'm the Apple Valley High School Uni Apple Valley High School Associated Student Body Line President. Today, I'll be sharing with you what our students and staff have been up to the last month, as well as some of our goals for November. And I wanted to preface this by apologizing if my voice is scratchy or anything. I've been singing a lot of Christmas songs, and I would show you, but there's some notes only Mariah Carey can hit, so <laughs> I'll save your ears. This past month has marked the start of a new quarter for our Sun Devils, and they have been excelling academically. Some of our amazing students were recognized with medals and certificates for their ability to read, write, and speak two languages at the Seal of Biliteracy ceremony. Academic shields and eagles were handed out around campus to students who had GPAs above a 3.5, and sophomores and juniors took the PSAT. 
Our sports programs have also been enjoying lots of success. Cross country, girls tennis, football, and cheer held their senior nights to celebrate the wonderful graduating seniors. Samantha Most and Vishwa Patel are the MRL All-League Tennis Doubles Champions. Malachi Murphy from Cross Country will be moving on to CIF after his outstanding performance at the MRL Finals. And Varsity Football is going to playoffs with their first game against Hesperia tomorrow. Some of our other athletes are gearing up for their seasons with basketball and soccer holding tryouts and wrestling conditioning after school. Our clubs and pathways have been active in their school and community throughout October. National Honor Society held their induction for the 35 students who have pledged themselves to keeping up their scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Key Club helped pass out snacks to bikers on Saturday at the Victor Valley Bike Tour and candy to attendees of the Town Trunk Retreat. On the 11th, they'll go to Six Flags for the Key Club Fall Rally with hundreds of clubs from all over Southern California. Avid seniors went on a week-long field trip touring NorCal colleges like UC Merced, San Francisco State, San Jose State, UC Berkeley, UC Santa Cruz, Cal State Monterey Bay, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and UC Santa Barbara. Students from MAST, Camp, and Graphics attended the High Desert Education Summit at VVC to showcase our programs, and EMR practiced caring for patients during the Great Shakeout, while the rest of us prepared to stay safe in the event of emergency. Incredible work, Sun Devils. ASB has been working hard as ever. We put on an amazing show at halftime last week to spotlight our homecoming royalty and crown the king and queen. We had a super fun spirit week with days like sports day, camo day, barbecue dad versus soccer mom day, my personal favorite, class colors, and pink out. Then we danced the night away at the homecoming dance, which had an attendance of over 700 students. Tuesday was Halloween, and we hosted a costume contest at lunch, with the winner being the Headless Horseman, though I saw a lot of hilarious and cool costumes. Later in November, we're planning our fall festival with clubs leading games, food vendors, and lots of fun to celebrate the chilly weather. We're also planning a game show night to replace our talent show, putting a Sun Devil spin on games like Family Feud, Jeopardy, and so much more. There are so many exciting things happening at Apple Valley High School, and I want to thank you all for your continued support. We couldn't give our students any of these incredible opportunities without you. Thank you. Very good. Our union representative reports, CSEA, Nicholas Garrett. I don't believe he's here this right. evening. Avuta, Karen Sabers. I don't believe she's here this evening. Okay. Either. Comments from the superintendent? I kind of like the buffer by the unions before I have to speak because after they, they get to follow the students. Great job, all of you. And um, Ismail commented about student advisory. We've already hit both high schools with a small group to um, plan with us, and we're getting ready to do our large group, which will have about 70, between 50 and 75. I think we had 80 at Granite last year. Um, at High Desert Premier, hopefully some of the returners, you'll be there. And you did make change last year, and you gave us some great ideas. So we love the process, but it takes the students telling us what other topics we need to talk about and not just what is adult-driven. So appreciate the feedback. Um, our FFA students are in Indianapolis right now at National Conference. Um, we will be getting out an invitation, so it's good to say this in the group. Um, ethnic Studies, we are moving down the pathway. The county um, schools will be working with us to facilitate the process of what that looks like in our district. And so um, tomorrow we will be getting out um, information about how to participate in that, the initial meeting, and then we'll share the following meetings um, for this school year. Um, next school year is a different topic because we will have to plan out those meetings based on um, what we actually need to get the curriculum completed. Uh, first time in school history, as mentioned, um, Granite Hills High School took the title. Uh, drove up to Barstow on a Thursday night, um, and it was probably one of the coldest nights yet, and it was so exciting. And um, Granite showed up big, showed up big. Their cheerleaders have to be down at the end of the track. They don't even get to be on the side because of where they have the bleachers. Um, I was glad that after um, be, I've been to Barstow High School before for a football game, there were no lights Terrible. on the on the <laughs> um, visitor side. It was very dark in the past. So they've got lights. They've upgraded that. But it was great to watch the game and um, the celebration at the end. Pretty cool. 
I think it goes without saying that Daniel Rincon, as a um, alumni for that school, as the athletic director, that this is a major um, milestone for him. And um, again, for Coach Gonzalez, he, he when we were talking about the stadium at a, a recent meeting with the planning, he told the architect um, team that he either played or one of his brothers played or has coached since the school has been playing football. And so for him to take a league title as the head football coach um, really does meet the criteria of what the um, touchdown club talks about all the time online, which is um, have faith, be fearless. And I think he lives that every day. And so congratulations to them. And then the fact that both high schools are in CIF this year is cool. Um, congratulations to Apple Valley High School and Coach Godfrey for um, moving on and um Let's go beat Hesperia. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference here because they're local, right? Like, let's beat Hesperia. Granite needs to win too. Just Adam, right? Okay. Thanks, Hannah. I have the confidence. Um, because of social media, I realized that DSL was running today. I got to work and I said to Zoe, um, do, you, do you know the DSL was running finals today? And she goes, no. And I said, well, I'm going out to Horseman because I have a little bit of time in my calendar. And so we went out and we watched the, the finals today. And I have to tell you, um, living in the high desert for years, all you knew about was Barstow and their ability to run cross country. Well, I'm going to tell you that Maroon crossed the finish line today and it wasn't Barstow. Yes. It was Granite. And it was the first seven that came in were Granite Hills High School females. And I kept thinking, where did everybody else go? Like, this really is done, right? And then the boys ran. And what I have to say is, I believe his name is Nolan. Is that correct? Okay. Nolan is a senior at Granite Hills High School. And today was the first day I got to watch him run. Um, I think he could have lapped everybody and he comes in and he's not even breathing heavy. And, and then you wait, you wait for the next group to come through. Well, Granite is in great um, poise for next year because they only have two seniors on the boys varsity team. The rest are freshmen and sophomore. So they're strong um, and it's exciting. They'll be at Mount Sac, I think a week from tomorrow. Okay. So exciting that all of these things are happening and, I love the end of the seasons because we we do well every year. Um, we did some walkthroughs at Rio Vista. All the principals in the district gathered for a meeting, and we do this as a rotation through the schools, and we do walkthroughs in classrooms. Teachers know we're coming. It's anonymous. There is no um, negative feedback. This is all about calibrating ourselves on walkthroughs, and it was a wonderful day. And everybody just kept commenting on how fabulous the work that they have been doing on foundations is showing up in the classroom. So we were thrilled to see it because they were one of the early adopters. And then um, Sophia mentioned seal of biliteracy. It's always wonderful to see those kids that are biliterate come across the stage with the others in the high desert that um, meet the criteria. Apple Valley and Hesperia typically are the major part of the program. We had 44. Um, Hesperia is almost twice our size and they just had a few more than us, but not double. So um, that the seal of biliteracy requirements are changing for next year. It appears that more students will be able to qualify um, with a better measure that actually um, includes things like being able to speak the language fully and write it and not have the um, tests that students take in the spring be one of the, the factors. And then um, many of you are aware of the fingerprinting SB 531 that has eliminated our ability to put students out in the workforce um, tied to their school CTE programs. MDCP, um, that law has now written in that we can get our TPP kids um, and our, our students in CTE back out into the field. However, there are some hurdles that we have to accomplish. Um, I'm on a team with MDCP as one of the superintendents um, working on the process by which we will do this um, because we have to figure out the fingerprinting, who's going to be the custodian of record, and currently we're looking at some options that, that may expedite this with a target of um, – spring semester, hopefully January, getting kids back out there. We will match that with our TPP students as well. Um, though they're not housed under MDCP, the Mountain Desert um, Career Pathways, we want it to match so that we meet the same criteria. And then um, Halloween, kids mentioned it. Um, prior to being superintendent, Tom started what he was called the Halloween Grays. 
And it was all about the food on the property. And people could have a theme and dress up here at the ESC. We, we don't get to do the fun things that schools get to do. And so it's the one time of year that they do it. And this year um, was, again, beyond. And I don't know how they're going to top it next year. But we had um, Kelsey Mahomes and Taylor Swift in the superintendent's office. Um, we had the Price is Right with the wheel that spun. Um, we had Alice in Wonderland, we had Disney, the uh, Disneyland, and then we had the circus with a big top. And I'm glad that the fire marshal doesn't show up on that day. We will not announce in the future either that we are going to do it on Halloween or not, because I think if they knew they'd come and shut us down. Um, but we, we have a lunchtime where we graze and go to each office to check out who's topped who. And while the nurses think they have it often, IT is the group to be. So I appreciate everybody and, and the parents that showed up that day were kind of in amazement that the adults were um, participating, but they were. So, um, and CSBA is coming. You will be traveling before the next board meeting for um, the annual education conference. And we look forward to hearing from California School Boards Association. Very good. Board comments, Rick? Sure, thank you, Dennis. I always like to comment on uh, the, the kids, the students that uh, speak at the podium. And um, Madison and Bradley, this is the first time we saw you guys tonight, you did a really good job. I want to comment on uh, Ismail. You know, this is your third time, and um, you're, you're, you're getting so much better. You know, not that you weren't good beginning, but you, you, you're so uh, at ease up there. And it was really cool that you mentioned your brother who's serving in the U.S. Marines, especially in this time of what's going on in the world. So um, kudos to you. So keep up the, the students, keep up the good work. And as always, Sophia <clears throat> and Hannah, you, know, you guys are just like naturals up there. So good job. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Amanda? All right, thank you to all of the students that, I'm not sure you can hear me. Thank you to all of the students for coming out tonight and sharing with all of the exciting things going on at your schools. It really is the highlight of our meeting. Um, so on Monday night, uh, a few of us got to <clears throat> head down the hill and attend the fall joint meeting of the California School Board Association. Um, and the topic was all about artificial intelligence. And it was just really exciting um, to listen to good news about artificial intelligence and how all of the different exciting ways um, that educators are going to get to utilize it in the classroom. And, and really, um, for you students, how many careers are going to be open to you in the future to be able to use it. Um, and it was just nice to not hear so much doom and gloom about it. Um, and all the ways that it's going to really expand um, the career opportunities for, for you guys. So that was really interesting. Um, and then I wanted to say congratulations also to all of the SEAL of Biliteracy winners. Um, that's just incredible to learn two or even three multiple um, languages. And also, if anyone in our district did not quite make the cut in time for that ceremony, they still are able to make it in time for graduation if they're senior, so they can still get that um, and have that seal of biliteracy in time for walking in May. Um, let's see. Oh, earlier today, um, so after I got out of school today, I was able to swing by over to VVC and they had their Dia de los Muertos uh, celebration. And so that was really exciting just to kind of see. I was hoping maybe we'd like run into Ashley Guzman, but she was, I was, I was like, maybe, maybe we'll see her, but no. There was a lot of people over there though. They had their um, community celebration open to the public, um, great mariachi band going on. Um, so that was nice, kind of got that in between coming over here for our, our meeting. Um, and then just one exciting thing I wanted to share. Um, this past weekend, I was able to finish up my master's in governance program, which I started back in August. And it was a series of five different sessions where I had to commute down to San Marcos, which 
um, would be a Friday afternoon. So if you can imagine Friday afternoons <laughs> to San Marcos, I think I possibly spent as much time in traffic that I did maybe in all of the sessions over the weekend. But um, it was just so worthwhile. And I know that um, Mrs. Akpara or Ms. Akpara is going to be done with hers um, next month. And I know Mrs. Nelson's almost done with hers as well. Um, but yeah, next month. Yeah, next month. Are you next month as well? Yeah. I don't know. I show up online. Ours is online. <laughs> we didn't get the in-person one. See, I know myself. And I knew that if I didn't sign up where I physically had to go, I, yeah. So it, I just, I would encourage anyone who hasn't done it. It is so worthwhile because it was, it was definitely um, intense, but it was definitely worthwhile. So it, I'm just going to read really quick. Some of the classes was Foundations in Effective Governance, Setting Direction, Student Learning and Achievement, Policy and Judicial Review, School Finance, Human Resources, Collective Bargaining, um, and Community Relations and Advocacy. So there's basically just, you know, how to do what we do up here and like looking through a lot of the legal parts. And it was just very informative. Um, and then when we were done on Saturday, they gave us like a little graduation or a little certificate. So, um, yeah, so I just, I would encourage the rest. Um, and there was really fantastic was there's this other board and I'm not sure I would go this far, but I was impressed with them. Every time they get a new trustee, the whole board goes through the process again together. And so there was a couple of like trustees on the board that were like, yeah, this is my fifth time. And I was like, Whoa. But I'll be honest, I probably would have to go through the school finance one like five times to really feel solid on that one. Um, so last but not least, I just want to say thank you to all of the veterans um, that we have in our district and also our community. I know Veterans Day is coming up this month, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of our veterans, and that is it for me. Gary? Just want to also thank you. Uh, say thank you to the students. It's always a pleasure to hear what's what's going on. It's, it, it, I know I speak for the rest of the board in saying uh, you guys just amaze us in, in what's going on uh, on your campuses, and we appreciate you bringing us up to date. We can't be at every event, but it's really exciting to see the the participation, the the excellence, the growth that's going on on your campuses. So thank you all, all of you so much for for being here and bringing us up to date and sharing the great things that are going on. In your campuses, and and as as Rick was saying, it's it's always a, a blessing to see you you fill into these positions and feel comfortable and, and grow and blossom in these positions because I know the skills that you're learning now are going to uh, carry on and be very important in your in your later uh, college careers and working careers. So so thanks again for everything that you do for the students on your campuses and for the information that you bring. We really appreciate it. And it was it was mentioned. I think Hannah, you mentioned it about the, the fall festivals, and I had a chance to visit a number of the, the fall festivals that, that were going on around the district this this uh, past month. And it was everywhere I went. It was it was just fantastic to see the amount of uh, staff participation, the amount of student participation, the amount of parent participation. Uh, they were very, very well attended. And so I just, just want to say a big congratulations to all the parents and the staff and the teachers um, and the students who did such a great job in the, in the various fall festivals. I really have to take my hat off to Mrs. Morales at Phoenix Academy too, because she was, she volunteered to be the target in the pie throwing contest. And, uh, and, and so she, she was definitely the, the, the lady of the, even she was, I guess it was like some kind of a fundraiser, you know, to throw pies at her, but she was just, just a great sport and, and, uh, and uh, getting all kinds of money for her causes. So just, just thank you for all the hard work that went into the fall festivals. I know the students and the parents really enjoyed it. And I also want to say thank you to Mr. Smith for uh, allowing me to, to come onto your campus and, and hang out with you for a while. It's always a blessing to, to, to go to High Desert Premier and see what's going on there. I just congratulate the teachers and the staff and the students for all the tremendous things that are going on at High Desert. Mr. Smith, you were sharing with me about the significant improvement in the attendance, uh, the significant improvement in the graduation rate. So I just want to say congratulations to you and your staff uh, for the success of your FOCUS program which uh, heightens the collaboration you know, in your school community. So just thank you for your, for your leadership and the leadership of your staff uh, in, in that area. So just uh, again, thank you for all the hard work that our, our teachers, our staff are doing, our parents are doing every single day. It's always, always a blessing to get out on the campuses and, and, and share that and enjoy that with you. So thank you, that's all.
Um, I'm going to start with the students. You all that spoke today, you are my, you are rock stars. <laughs> I almost want to say you get a star, you get a star, you get a star, you get a star, you get a star. Um, I was really impressed uh, by your poise. Um, it is not easy to speak in front of adults and um, and to hold your own. Uh, so I'm really I'm really really impressed with uh, what with what you had to share. Um, I didn't do much this this uh, last month, but I did enough. Um, I went to a trunk or treat uh, at the town center and actually handed out um, books to kids. Uh, I was surprised that the kids and their families were interested in books. And uh, some of them wanted to take more than one book. And the teachers' union were gracious enough to say, if you want two books and you can read it, go ahead. You know, so I have to say thank you uh, to the teachers in this district because, uh, you know, you extend yourselves outside of school. Uh, you continue to be present on behalf of the students that you service. Uh, congratulations to Mrs. Buchanan. I'm jealous. Um, uh, because we started the Masters in Governance, but we wanted to do it the other way, to do it virtual with the superintendent. So well, they didn't uh, let us, Maria. Remember? They didn't let us because there was no in person. Yeah, because COVID, COVID was in town, and we were not allowed to visit. That's how we um, so that's how we ended up doing ours uh, virtual, and it is a two-day deal for us. She does one day, so we're good. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not jealous that much to snatch your paper. Well, I know and by the way, she took my kids trunk or treating for me too because I was down at Masters in Governance. So, but so I'm I, jealous of that part. I, I played grandma and I've always liked to, anybody that wants their kids to be, to have a grandma in place, I'm ready. I'll, I'll take a place. Um, I went to a craft show at uh, Rancho Verde and the parents were magnificent. They had uh, stations, and I ended up buying two pumpkins. Uh, one was Apple Valley High School color, and one was Granite Hills color. Uh, and I kept thinking, I'm gonna bring it, but I bought the pumpkins in October, and I couldn't use it in November because Thanksgiving, um, uh, Veterans Day, uh, what do you call it? Halloween is over. So I didn't know how to do it, but definitely I'm going to save it in a bag because I will use it next in next October, and it will be my, it will be right here. Um, uh, thank you so much uh, to all of the people who um, who took the time to come to this event, to this board meeting today. Um, it's always a challenge to come to a board meeting, and you may or may not be satisfied with what we have to say, but we are always willing to listen to you and hopefully begin to tackle what you bring forward to us. Our job as, a tr as trustees is to be of service. My middle name is service. Uh, and the students who got the biliterate um, literacy certificate, I should have had it. When I was growing up, I had to learn other languages. I sit here and I speak seven languages. But sometimes it takes me a while to translate what I'm trying to say because other languages are in play in my head. So I need to be able to navigate how it is. English is not my first language. So I keep trying to make it happen. But I thank you all uh, for taking the time to come here. I appreciate your children and what they're bringing to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, that's very good. I'd like to commend all the parents and the staff that that come tonight. That's good, I love the sound of kids. Now I wanna really commend uh, Hannah and Sophia. You've really improved and it's gonna serve you well in life. And uh, don't worry, Ismail, you're doing good too. With your smile and your personality, you could talk your way out of a prison camp, you know? Uh, it's good to hear that Granite, after all these years, going to the playoffs, I know it means a lot to me. And Dan Rencon's a former student of mine, and um, this is going to be good. Should be a good weekend. A little bit of victory. On, yeah, it will be. Both both high schools will do well. So with that, we'll um, get our closed session reports, and then we'll let the students leave. 
Cook yeah, go ahead. Food. Go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you you drop something there. <laughs> funny, man. Thank you so much. Hey, we'll see you. Oh, Farah. Oh, Farah. Oh, Farah. RC. RC. Yeah, good job. Thanks. Ismail is so funny. He could talk his way out of a prison camp. He convinced me that they made a good job. Okay. Maria will give us our okay. closed session reports. In closed session, the Board of Trustees took action in support of the following recommendation from the superintendent. Conference with labor negotiator on a motion by Mr. Raleigh and seconded by Mr. Arce. The Board of Trustees approved the following. The Memorandum of Understanding with the Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association dated September 28, 2023 regarding emergency closure on a vote of 5-0. In closed session, the Board of Trustees took action in support of the following recommendation from the superintendent. Conference with labor negotiator. On a motion by RC seconded by Okpara, the Board of Trustees approved the following. Approved the memorandum of an agreement with the California School Employees Association, CSEA chapter 828, dated September 20th, 2023, regarding Article 16, reclassification. Thank you. Uh, now I need um, an approval, motion to approve the agenda as is. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. No recognition at this time. Discussion information by um, Mr. Slosher on... Um, Vaping. Implication of electronic cigarettes and education code 48915. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. This is not a new topic, but there is new implications um, based on some legal analysis that our staff has done and with in conjunction with our attorneys. Electronic cigarettes, vaping devices are, um, ask any school administrator, really any parent or student, um, they're all too common on campuses, and it's um, you know, sort of a constant job working to make sure that these aren't on campus, and then when they are, um, they're you know, taking action to remove them. What's it, implication today is 48915, which is um, about it. It's really at what point does this cross the threshold and become a drug? And so um, there it is. Just real quick, so we're all defining the terms and talking about things in the same way. Um, these vaping devices are, one, they're really hard to detect. They're tiny, as you might imagine, and or they're larger ones. They come in all shapes and sizes, but they have to have these three elements, some kind of battery or power source, a heating element, and then a tank or pod to put whatever the liquid is into it. And of course, all kinds of crazy chemicals are put into these. What's germane for us today is, yes, of course, they have nicotine in them, some of them, but they, of course, now also in California, they have THC quite commonly. And they're also adding flavorings, right? All of these are actually prohibited at school by either ed code 48900H, 48900C, but of course now we have the implications potentially for 48915. They're also um, prohibited because all of our schools, because we've received federal funds, must be alcohol-free and drug-free. So they're, they're prohibited for adults or students. No one can have them now. So for nicotine only, as I mentioned, 48900H kind of is the governing ed code that allows us to administer student discipline for, you know, what, um, for cigarettes. I can remember as a senior in Apple Valley High School, there was a smoking section. This ed code wasn't in place. Yeah. <laughs> it was right outside the gym. I really didn't understand that, exactly how that was supposed to work. Right by the girl's side, yeah. It's not there anymore. Now, that was a long time ago. I'm old. But of course, um, school administrators aren't coming across cigarettes quite commonly anymore, right? That's the most, that's a very rare thing. It's very it, often these, these vape devices with nicotine. So this ed code applies, but as you remember from our training from um, regarding school discipline, 
These ed codes in the 48900s require secondary findings. Other means of corrections have been applied and have repeatedly failed, or due to the nature of the incident, um, it's such so egregious and dangerous that the student must be removed permanently. Our response, typically, of course, confiscation, parent contact, counseling, and, and, and cessation activities. We use the tobacco use prevention education curriculum. There are mitigating factors, right? Frequency, is it being sold? Those kinds of things can up the level of, of student discipline and move that along quicker so that we you know, can make, ultimately, we're trying to keep these out of school and, and really keep students healthy. That's if they're tobacco only. However, if they're THC related, um, of course we can use 48900C, the one that governs all drugs. But remember that that ed code points us to a section of division 10 of the health and safety code and causes us to look for definitions there. Now, again, it's the 48900 ed code requires secondary findings. We really have to make sure we're following. Now this one doesn't, you know, this, this is, this is important to note the difference between the 48900 where you can suspend or there can be a recommendation for expulsion, but we have to have those secondary findings. What's different is 48915A1C. Here, remember, must happen at school or on off school grounds at a school activity. So this cannot be uh, students walking home and on their way home, they get caught, um, you know, maybe behind a store or another house. Uh, on the path of travel with these devices. We'd have to use 48900C. But if they're at a school sanctioned event, on campus or off, then this ed code could apply. So note also that it does, again, point us to section 11053 of division 10 of the health and safety code. And it says, interestingly, that the first offense of possession of not more than one ounce of marijuana or other than concentrated cannabis. Now, typically students, again, one ounce of marijuana of the leaf of the plant, it's pretty uncommon to have students with that quantity. Of course, if we do, then we have this ed code to use. If they have less than an ounce, this ed code doesn't apply. The question we have is, what does concentrated cannabis really mean? We've been looking for a really clear definition because of these vape pens. Again, this, this is all new territory over the last five years, and we wanted to make sure we really understood this. So... We have to follow the references, right? Um, chapter two, section of division 10, it really just tells us to start 11053. 11054 is where it says that cannabis is on list. So it's in there, it's identified, but it does not tell us what concentrated means. It does point us back to chapter one, where chapter one says, here's the list of definitions, and it does have a concentrated cannabis definition, where it says that really essentially anything that's not the plant, where it's separated resin or concentrate. Well, that's exactly what's in these vape pens. I mean, that's what's there. So that means any wax, resin, oil, concentrate that's THC labeled or our drug, our police department tests and verifies that it does have THC in it, does conform to the 48915A1C definition of concentrated cannabis. Here's why we're talking to you about this. Um, in relevant part, this ed code then says the superintendent or his principal shall recommend expulsion unless other means of correction will work. Now think of the circumstances here. If, if this, unfortunately, these devices are common. They're just out there in the world. They're, at, they're, they're legal in the state. So they're, they might be legally at a child's home. So, um, the circumstances could be anything from student bringing them to school and selling them. And we, you know, that's a, a behavior that we believe needs immediate attention and severe discipline. But it could be a, a kindergarten student who doesn't really know what it is and throws it in a backpack and brings it to school. And now we're dealing with that. And in that case, we may decide other means of correction are appropriate. But in this case, based on this ed code, the principal would have to tell Mrs. Nelson why they believe that it, an expulsion is not required. That's a big change from how we've been dealing with these heretofore. So our steps are these. One, we wanted to make sure you were aware that this, this is kind of raises these items to a kind of a higher level of alert and awareness. We want to make sure and do some staff training, next steps. Make sure and do a parent campaign and student awareness because this will be potentially, a for us, we're hoping, a chance to really make people aware that this is, these are devices that can't be at school. 
that we have to take a hard stance with this and that if they are at home, leave them there. So that's really the basis of this. We wanted to start with making sure that we delineated the definition where we got it, that it's been vetted by legal counsel and that we're gonna go forward in this manner. So not, not the, <laughs> it's a terrible topic to follow up these great student presentations, but, <laughs> and yet uh, for, in the interest of student safety, an important one. So I'll pause for questions. I have a question. Um, so I, I just actually today I read a story and it, it actually was about the president uh, passing or signing legislation banning certain types of cigarettes. But then on this, in the same story, there was uh, about vaping in, the, in schools in that the numbers were way down. And I was like, and the numbers were so low. It was like one to two percent of students that are using any type of vape, whether it's THC, nicotine or you know, flavored stuff. Are we, is it an epidemic? Is this, was that story wrong? Are we seeing a reduction in Good question. vaping? I'd have to leave that to our high school administrators and kind of tap into them. Based anecdotally on what I'm hearing, it's not, it's, it's still an issue. I'll, yes, we have the nodding heads. Yeah. Maybe we lag behind what I hope is a trend that's coming our way. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was shocked to see that it was such low numbers. Uh, they, they said cigarettes is almost, um, you know, there's there's no cigarettes Just about gone. anymore. It's, yeah. all, it's all vaping, but the numbers even for vape are down. So hopefully it's... Well, it's, we hope so. And, yeah. you know, maybe this campaign can continue to push that awareness because not only, do, of course, do we see it, but we see students who just can't go without it, right? They just really struggle to be away from that well, just because of the addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's all I, I have. Well, the only question I have is... Um, we do know that vaping is highly um, addictive. Yeah. And, um, and I'm just wondering if we do have a treatment program where we can send our students who are getting so addicted to it. Yet I understand that there's a study out there that says it's not, it's not a, big, a big issue. Um, but because I also work in a school system, it is a big issue, really big. You know, so um, when the students uh, show up in your classroom and you turn your back and then the, ne the next second when you turn around, you have this smoke screen around, you know, somebody is vaping. Yeah. Uh, so um, this is important enough for us to pay attention uh, before we before we start losing our kids. Yeah, I agree. And that's something the high school administrators have worked to do from the point of view of, of bringing in, um, even if need be, our therapists, right? To say, okay, this is, this is not only do we need to administer appropriate discipline, but when you do come back, what are we gonna do to make this different for you? Yeah. And so that might mean counseling, um, it might mean referral to an outside agency, but if, we need, if, if need be, we've been trying to use in-house solutions to that as well. I'm gonna Point apologize up front, Dennis, that um, I, I'm just These chairs here. get used during professional development, and we try to tell people not to use them um, because they get changed. And Mr. Bender likes his not to rock, and so I sent Kylie down on the floor just now to fix it for him, and she dropped him to the ground. Like that's what happened. She can't stop laughing. I didn't want the audience or people online watching. Or I I got Amanda looking at me like, everybody okay? No. But this is how the superintendent operates with her executive assistant. She puts her on the ground to fix something and doesn't take responsibility for it. So I apologize, Kylie, that I made you do that. Dennis, I'm sorry that we I just dropped your chair. Oh, okay. And I'm sorry to the audience that we had to have that moment. But just um, bear with us. Uh, yeah. That was so, that I'd like, was so I'd like to point out, yeah. on, Netflix, on Netflix, they have a, a special documentary. It's entitled Vape and how it was developed at Stanford and how they made millions. It's only three episodes, but it's an eye-opener uh, how damaging that thing is, especially to teen girls that get addicted to the flavors. And it's like 10 times as strong as a cigarette. It's crazy, but I mean, it, it really opens your eyes to watch it. Simple, Thank you. Simple vape is the title of it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I no, that's all right. That was a good job, Pat. Kylie, do we have any public comments? We have two. Okay. Javier? 
No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope to be as tall. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board and esteemed cabinet, I stand before you again with a sense of urgency and a call to action as we anticipate the arrival of Prop 28 funds. At our last meeting, I uh, laid the foundations for a transformative vision, one where the arts play a critical role in cognitive development and academic excellence. It is essential that we revisit this profound impact of music education, underscored by double blind studies, which I shared with you last time, which shows uh, that music enhances the cognitive performance more significantly than any other activity. Um, our district has been spending significantly on music education, but with no clear coordination or articulation between the elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, the need for a visual arts performing, the uh, VAPA coordinator, visual and performing arts coordinator, has become even more apparent as I meet with my VAPA colleagues. Currently, I'm the longest serving director of instrumental music at the high school. Uh, and the head of our premier performing arts academy, the Great Academy. I am keenly aware of the potential that lies within our grasp. Yet as we stand at the cusp of this opportunity, I feel a growing concern that without immediate planning and the guidance of a dedicated VAPA coordinator, we may not fully capitalize on the resources that will soon be available to us. The conversation around a VAPA coordinator should not be perceived as another item on our agenda, but as a strategic necessity. This role will be pivotal in creating a cohesive arts program that not only support our students' artistic per, uh, pursuits, but also advance their academic achievement and life skills. This isn't about adding structure for structure's sake, but about unlocking the full potential of our students' abilities. Therefore, I urge the district to initiate proactive conversations and planning sessions. Our readiness to utilize the Prop 28 funds efficiently will set the stage for the caliber of arts education we aspire to provide. Our commitment to this cause will demonstrate will be demonstrated to our community and others looking to us as a model that we can pr prioritize educational excellence and innovation. Uh, therefore, our, I'm sorry, our district has the potential to be a beacon of arts education where students thrive not only in their educational endeavors, but also in their academic and personal growth. A VAPA coordinator can ensure that we achieve this vision with the attention and the skill it deserves. Uh, let us not delay in this en de endeavor. The time to act is now. We must come together to prepare, plan, and position ourselves to be ready for the moment these funds are released next month, I'm being told. Uh, I'm here to prepare I'm here to prepare and assist, and I'm eager to collaborate in any way that I can and to ensure that our district stands ready to embark on this transformative journey. I look forward to having your support and working with uh, all the stakeholders. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Shane, what's your motto? Uh, golly, uh, Churchill? No, I was going to say Winston Churchill. He and I have a Winston Churchill connection there. <laughs> sweat and tears. He has blood, sweat, hot, and tears, <laughs> which uh, I will have none of today. Um, that being said, I just I wanted to go ahead and start by, first of all, um, just thanking everyone here. Um, in my 24 years of uh, being a music teacher in this district, I've felt so grateful for the support that our community, um, our administrators, our district, our board members have always given. And I've felt so blessed to be able to go ahead and to teach in Apple Valley Unified. That being said, um, I want to speak to what Javier was mentioning. Um, the passage of Prop 28 gives us a unique opportunity to go ahead and look at ways we can go ahead and improve even more upon what our arts education is going to be uh, providing our students. Um, as uh, Ms. Akpara was saying, you know, service to these students is uh, primary. What I wanted to go ahead and do is basically supplement um, Javier's speech um, and make it nice and quick so we can get everybody else out of here. <laughs> and that is just to go ahead and also speak to the need for a visual and performing arts um, coordinator. Many districts, um, many of which are smaller and larger than ours, um, have found that that is something that benefits. Um, I actually have, uh, we'll be giving you guys, I guess, digitally uh, tomorrow morning, a list of um, essentially the, what is required of a, a VAPA coordinator. Uh, we have wonderful um, directors within our, um, our district um, leadership roles. Um, I know we have one that is kind of overseeing our music programs in general, but the amount that um, what a, vo a VAPA coordinator can bring um, is so much more than I think any one person who's already has a ton on her plate to go ahead and try to also add on. Um, if we were to go ahead and look at the opportunity of having a Prop 28 um, funded position, um, 
there are so many things um, I, I could just throw out there really fast. Advocacy, advocacy promotion, curriculum development, um, equity, equi yeah, equity and access, community or, um, engagement, um, getting um, articulation between the the um, elementary, middle school, and high school um, things. That's something that I've always loved seeing in other districts is the ability to go ahead and have a district-wide um, articulation where the younger kids get a chance to go and work um, all the way up through their programs. And we have some wonderful um, elementary and middle school music programs that exist because of the administrators or individual teachers who have um, that that experience and knowledge. But to be able to have somebody who can coordinate that and um, and see the things that you guys will get a chance to read tomorrow morning um, to say, oh, wow, our district really could go ahead and um, take what we have already to the next level. I encourage you guys to go ahead and uh, consider the possibility of looking into maybe seeing if we can use some of that Prop 28 money to fund a, a visual performing arts uh, coordinator. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Discussion session, we need to approve the certificated and classified personnel actions as listed. May I have a motion? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the recommendation for requested leave as noted. I move. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the proposal for daybreak health, elementary family, philanthropy. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We need a discussion on okay, that. Okay, let's, let's go for it. Yeah, or I can wait till the item's seconded and open for discussion yeah, that has been okay we did. you want to set it aside just want to make sure and um, answer any questions should there be any regarding okay. this item it's a it's a large uh, contract to add the ability to provide um, family telehealth in areas where in grade levels and really ages where we're currently not able to do that but it's an area of great need and we've had such good experience working with daybreak health so far um, that we wanted to just make sure and bring this to you and just give you an opportunity to ask questions should you have them. How do you, deter how do you determine who goes, who gets the service? At the moment, um, right, well, of course, right now what we're doing is we're making a referral through Care Solo, so direct, directly to DMCC and or trying to assist a family get service through their health care provider. These would be families who tell us we have no other way, but we need help. Currently, we cannot ref we can't really reach them or get services to them unless DMCC, the, the local Desert Mountain Children's Center, can serve them. If for some reason they cannot, or if that service is going to take several weeks to set up, this might act as a bridge until such services could be rendered. Okay, I, I don't have a problem with it because I do know that uh, DMCC is uh, is overloaded. Yeah, and uh, sometimes when you ask for those services, it may take months. To it, even get opportunity to be in front of somebody, so if the district is moving forward to be able to service the kids that we have and there's a need, I say we move forward with it. I just wanted you to explain it so that the public will know what it's all about. Thank you for that opportunity. Okay, and do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson. I'll move. Second. That's expulsion number two, right? Number two, two hundred three twenty-four. I move. Second. I'll, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Expulsion case number three, two hundred twenty-three through twenty-four. Motion. I move. Second. I'll, I'll second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 The consent agenda. It's um, one through thirty-three. To expedite everything, we'll do it all at once. So can I have a motion to approve 1 through 33? I'd like to pull number 15, please. Number what? 15. Did she say 15? 15. 15. Okay. Yeah, 1, 5. That's it. I'm going to pull number. That's your number. <laughs> I'm going to pull numbers 9, 10, uh, 24, 30, and 31. So nine starts, so <laughs> nine and ten. Um, the reason I'm pulling nine and ten is I... So we, I have to, we have to approve it. Okay. Yeah, let me just sure. clarify. You are making a motion to um, approve one through eight, 
11 through 14, yes. 16 through 23, 25 through 29, 29, 32 and 33. Correct. Okay, so if there can be a motion to approve those, then we can go back and I move. Do we have a second? second? Uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, what's okay, the so deal with nine? Nine and ten, uh, they travel together. So I have a question. Um, they have the same um, board policy. One is administrative regs, and one is a board policy. And they're all dealing with... Um, they're all dealing with um, uh, uniform complaint. However, as I'm reading it, the language is not the same for both. I know that one is AR and one is um, uh, a board policy. So I'm kind of curious about why the language is a little different for both. Ms. Opara, are you, the one you had called me about today was 1312.1 um, yeah. board policy and AR? Mm -hmm. You pulled board policy 1312.2 and 1312.3. I think I can answer all, all of the above yeah. if that if that, if helps. that works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand the question, I believe, in, in reference back to the variance in language between the 1312.1 board policy and the 1312.1 uh, administrative regulation. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, that down there on item number 9 and 10, those are 1312.2 and 0.3 both of which are board policies here for a first read. 1312.2 um, is exclusively focused on complaints concerning curriculum. So if okay. we ever have a curriculum complaint come in, uh, that that is the board policy that governs that process. And then 1312.3 is pretty much our, our uniform complaint procedure uh, policy, which are, are what I would call our higher level complaints, those that have to do with discrimination, harassment, things like that for protected class. But our 1312.1, those are our general, I don't want to say run of the mill and make it sound like I'm downplaying it, but our, our general personnel complaints, yeah. things that people have concerns about that may not meet the threshold. And if you look at the structure of the board policy versus the administrative regulation, You'll notice the board policy in typical fashion tells us, you know, what we need to do. The administrative regulation is kind of how we do that. These have to be read in unison because when we read board policy 13, the board policy for the point one, it'll go down to like the appeal process at the end. Correct. But then we look at the 13, the ad reg, the administrative regulation, and it says, Stop, when you get to that appeal, <laughs> these are the things that you better have ready for the board to see in order to fulfill our, our policy on that. So it's like, what'll happen? We're gonna have an appeal. How are we gonna do it? You're gonna provide these things. And that's why it's in, in okay. two different areas. Thank you. And this is Thank all you. in response to 1078? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it does have a lot to do. It's uh, entirely uh, related to the, um, instru the yes. Okay. Uh, is it open number 10? That's right. The instructional material one is related to AB 1078. Um, yes. which is new law that just went into effect. Okay. So do you want to move 9 and 10? So number 15. 15. Oh, that's me. All right. So that is all of the litany of the literature lists that were approved. And I just wanted to bring it forward, especially for the public, because there was a, a few different lists on there. And um, it was brought to my attention that we did not used to have a district librarian and that we were kind of housed under the county librarian, but that we now have Grace Gardner mm -hmm. and that she has spent tons and tons of time going through all of our old um, board approval lists and scanned all of them in. And so now they are all accessible digitally and easily searchable. And so what we're approving here is all of those lists now that have been approved. The ones that have never gone through the full pro process. They now have gone through the formal process. Any that was not found in okay. any of the archives has been Gone, has gone through the process, even if they've been used for decades. Gotcha. We took them through the process just so that they were on display and Fantastic. publicly. Yes, all of it. All right. 
But all of the other ones, though, she spent just hours and hours and researching. And now we have it all nice and neat in one spot and make it nice and clean. So thank you. Please tell yes. her thank you. Will do. Thank you. Yes. Okay, number 24. 24. Um, I, w I, I know that I, I contacted the superintendent regarding this. So I really would like the community to know what 24 is about. Um, even though she explained it to me, but I'm not sure enough people know enough about the, um, the community engagement initiative, peer leading and learning network district um, participation. So usually when we come in to approve these things, sometimes the community is not aware of what it, this really means. And so I wanted the explanation again so that it is publicly um, available. Go ahead, Pat. The Community Engagement in, um, Initiative is um, a group uh, statewide that is convened in order to help schools and school districts, but it actually is more school focused in their process of gathering community <laughs> input and writing the community schools implementation grants. And so our thought was that because we are also in that stage of community school planning, working towards an implementation grant, that this would act as a catalyst for us to be able to gather um, sort of appropriate coaching and information from successful grantees who can tell us the pathway they took, but allow us to customize it ourselves. There's no cost to us. In fact, they're um, paying um, any related costs that have to do with e any of the travel or um, other things that might incur, incur costs for participants. Um, we're limited to 15 participants. Um, so we have a home team and a travel team. <laughs> uh, I'm on the junior varsity. I don't get to travel. There's a group of folks who will be traveling um, if this proves to be useful. And we've said from the beginning that if this um, process is in serving the school district and the schools of Apple Valley, that this would be a good way for us to be kind of in the front of a successful grant application. Ultimately, that is our target. And if this serves in that in that way, that would be wonderful. So. Uh, uh Listening to you, I know that we did have a community school grant person that we had. Um, we paused on it. Now that we have this information, is that person going to be able to now get back in and participate in this process? Or is that person still on a holding pattern until this is done? I'm just curious. Uh, well, this process is entirely um, populated by um, school site staff, parents, and students. And so this is separate from the facilitation that we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, we can certainly still work outside of this really kind of limited eight-day process mm -hmm. to continue that work. Um, but we don't currently have a, a, the ability to do that, or, or, or rather have a plan to do that in this particular forum. However, um, this community school's work will be widespread. It could encompass all schools. Not all schools are participants in this really, really pretty small initiative of community engagement. And so, um, so I don't, I think I understand the question to be, can we still continue with the facilitation of Dr. Powell? I think um, that depends on what's necessary after they go through the CEI process. We had not been engaged in the community um, schools initiative, this group. And when we were invited to participate, we took, that was after that original um, request for um, proposal. And so if we end up sticking with the group and doing this, because they have to travel, they have to go two times to, I want to say. Santa Clara, San Francisco, yeah. and Ontario, which is an easier travel. So that's a large group, we, including students and some parents and staff members. Um, but because they pay for it as an initiative and they will help us with the writing of the grant, we feel like it's a place to start. If after they get going on it, if they come forward and say, this isn't helpful, then we will engage the board in that as a possibility. And we certainly have other schools that may go down the pathway of applying for the implementation grant that we did not originally apply for or intend to as a start, just because of um, capacity. You know, 
to start this up, it's a major commitment for with a five-year grant um, for the implementation. We only right now have that planning grant. The county did with the, um, the other systems portion. of support yes. um, allow for, um, and, uh, uh, with application from Apple Valley Unified, gave us permission to work with Dr. Powell in his capacity in serving the schools as was requested by schools. For trauma-informed instruction and support that way. Outside, totally separate. Totally separate and funded by the county. Yep. Because I'm kind of curious, when we get go all the way out of the county, we actually go out all the way out of the uh, area, our region. These people are in Northern California. Our, our coach yeah. is from Anaheim. Yeah, okay. So Anaheim schools have community schools. And so that's who they've assigned to Apple Valley as our, um, they were uh, an earlier round of implementation and have functioning community schools. Okay. So that's who we have been assigned. It is a statewide group, however. There are 220 participants in this group, statewide. All right. I just want to be sure that we keep that in mind uh, because in the, the I, I hate to call people's names in on this. Right, but for consult but consultation. For the consultation, because he understands the culture of here. Um, and to get people from, um, from Anaheim, I'm not sure they understand the culture of Apple Valley, even the high desert. Uh, so as we begin to write the grant, that we begin to um, actually branch out branch back out to um, the likes of Dr. Powell because he understands the, that culture to help out with the, that process. And just, I don't know if I'm saying two different things, um, but I, I thought that was, this is part of that whole- Related topic. Yes. And I think and that we're having that conversation. I like to really have the conversation. Yeah. And I think we've got him in at the schools doing the um, trauma informed instruction and support that way through their SIS grant, um, CSI grant, Pat, which one? SIS, <laughs> SIS, Something. whatever. We're differentiated assistants and that gives us access to SOS funds. SOS. So, so thank you. There's so <laughs> Too many, many acronyms. acronyms. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when we get ready to do the implementation, after they go through this beginning initial phase, so they've already done several online um, discussions as a group. Once they get moving, if it is not helpful to participate in the group we've been assigned to, we are not harmed to pull out and say we do not want to participate right, any correct. longer. Yeah. And That's then we will come back to the board with a recommendation on moving forward with some facilitation. Because really it wasn't about the writing. Dr. Powell would not be um, writing. He would we just be, be facilitating, facilitating the process so that it was okay. fully okay. Number 30. collaborative. Uh, number 30, um, I just wanted to state, you know, when I saw it initially, I thought, why do we have this many consultants under one umbrella. But uh, the superintendent explained to me that the consultant agreements are those that are under the, the threshold of $5,000. And so that, and we had given the permission to yes, the, um, the assistant superintendent um, uh, Ed service. Administrative services, services is authorized and under board service. policy. So did that. Then 31, I pulled it because I really wanted to take the time to thank our schools for meeting the standard for the Williams lawsuit um, because um, they really did prove that we, our, our students have the textbooks, this, our students have the materials, and there is no corrective action. And I wanted to take the time to say thank you so much for um, making sure that the textbooks and the materials are in front of the kids and there was no shortage. Thank you again. Okay, can I have a motion to approve 9, 10, 15, 24, 30, and 31? So, so moved. I second it. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. If there's no other business. I just uh, have a editor. comment real quick, Dennis. Yes, go ahead. If I can, if I may. Um, I want to thank uh, Javier and, and Shane for showing up. Oh, uh, yes. It means a lot when, uh, as a board member, when teachers show up to um, 
advocate for their programs. So I know this is the second time I'm seeing you guys here. It's and, a good program. Uh, you know, it's 8.30 at night, and, you know, you got to work in the morning, and it means a lot. So um, 8.30 in the evening, I'm sorry. you got to be to work. No, I mean, we got to get up. Anyway, uh, uh, well, I appreciate it. I want to acknowledge you guys here, so thanks. All right. I'd like to entertain a motion to Vamanos. Uh, so, uh, so <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You have your